Here in peaceful Worcestershire is a classic ruin to be enjoyed dry-eyed for its beauty alone, in which we can recapture something of the pleasing awe with which our forefathers discovered vestiges of the ancient world. Those words were written by Christopher Hussey, the eminent architectural historian in 1945, less than 10 years after the house was abandoned. But imagine it in its full glory, in the 1890s when fashionable society flocked to Whitley Court to be lavishly entertained at house parties, balls, dances, garden parties, soirees and concerts. One frequent visitor was the Prince of Wales, later to become King Edward VII. Each event was preceded by the crunch of gravel as the carriages and the limousines that replaced them swept up this forecourt to deliver their passengers at the house, looking forward to the pleasures that lay ahead. From medieval times, there had been a house here. By the time of the Civil War, it had grown into an imposing Jacobean mansion, the home of Sir William Russell, the Royalist High Sheriff of Worcestershire. His descendants were the Foley's, who lived here for nearly 200 years. They had made their vast fortune from iron, and many of them became MPs and high sheriffs. During their ownership, they extended the estate and made improvements and additions to the house, which included a passage linking the house to the church at the top of the slope, to the right. One of the architects they employed was John Nash, who designed Regent Street and Regent's Park in London during the 19th century. Still a child when the sale went through, and for a time, Whitley Court was rented out. One tenant was Queen Adelaide, widow of William IV and aunt to Queen Victoria. Lord Ward's immense wealth came from over 200 mines that he owned in the area of the West Midlands known as the Black Country. And once he had come into his inheritance, he transformed Whitley Court into the style of an Italian palace and the entertaining began. But it was later, during his son's ownership in the 1890s, that the lavish lifestyle of the house reached its peak. Imagine the guests passing through this hall before dinner to join Lord Dudley and his wife in the saloon beyond. Their silk and satin dresses rustling as they moved, fluttering feathers in their headdresses, sparkling jewels on ears, neck and wrists. 
the men's snowy white starched evening shirts crackling beneath their black evening dress. This ballroom took the brunt of the fire and the damage can still be seen in the charred wooden inserts in the brick walls. But this huge space was once the most magnificent room in the house. The walls and high ceiling were decorated in fashionable white and gold. The alcoves were filled with mirrors and paintings and eight crystal chandeliers holding a myriad of candles cast a sparkling light over the swirling dancers, their reflections caught fleetingly in the mirrors as they moved. Thank you. 